Okay, so I'm going to start the meeting off like normal and ask if anyone that is in right now inside of this uh, Zoom meeting, uh, do they have any questions? So Manuel, Temetope, Roger, Alex, any of you guys have any questions? No, I, I don't. Uh, hi, Manuel. Do, do you have a question? Yes, yes, but it's it's regarding to the sense valuation. Okay, sure, go ahead. Uh, okay, when we uh, I know I, I I watched the video and uh, when we talk about the valuation, we say they gave there's a different type as as you mentioned in the video, right? Yes. Yes. So now, when we come to fair valuation, uh, validating the fair value gap, can we mark? Can we mark? Uh, mark from the weeks or the bodies? Just the bodies. Okay. So, really, so let, let's pull up a chart here, right? And right. let's pull. Uh, what chart do you like to look at, Emmanuel? I was just look at just now. I was just looking at the geo too. Okay. I saw that uh, high of the week and uh, low of the week. I was just looking at the very same one. Okay, okay. Uh, so let's have a look here. My goodness, there's so many pairs here for some reason. So looking at this pair, and you asked if uh, it's you know if we should use the wick or should we use the body. So generally, this rule applies to the up close candles and the down close candles down -close, are where yes. inefficiency is lying so that we can understand how market makers would if they in a buy position where can they look to exit that buy position right so right. let's hypothetically look at what's happening now in gu over here so if we would all agree over here, there would be liquidity above this high, sort of that high there, and potentially even now this high. So it's relative equal highs. And if we look over here from this section of price action sort of over here, I'm just gonna change this color rather. And there is two up close candles. And from those two up close candles, we can actually identify a void over here. And that void could be on this particular time frame a fair value gap, which it's not, it's a void. But on a particular other time frame, like for example, maybe the daily or the weekly, this could just be a fair value gap on like a daily, for example. But nevertheless, if we are looking in terms of fair valuation, then if the market makers are in a buy position, and let's say because market makers would effectively buy below a low, something like that. And we could say that there is a void over there. There was some kind of liquidity grab below these lows and then it broke that low by trading higher over here and then it came back over here at this point over here there's actually a daily order block over here so price traded into the daily order block over there and now price is sort of reacting off of that area so there was a fair value gap or void on another time frame but in this case fair value gap and they bought underneath those lows over here so there was an impulsive move to the upside, price came down, and inside of this area here would have sat liquidity. And what did they do? They came in, took the liquidity below this low, and you know, testing the daily bullish order block, closing the daily fair value gap as we saw. And if they are in a buy position, they are accumulating orders to buy down here because that would be in some form of discount because you know if we measure it from swing high to swing low that would be some kind of discount it's also exiting out of that particular range's liquidity so that on one time frame it's internal range liquidity and on another time frame it's external range liquidity so they traded here and there's fair value in buying 
underneath the low, an old low, because that's where sell side liquidity would be resting. And if they were buying here, more importantly, what we were getting to was that if they were buying, where could they look to exit these long positions? Well, they could look to exit these long positions basically in this zone here. So from this up close candle to this up close candle, there is no buy side offered. You can see it's porous price action. Now, yeah, sure, I'm not marking the wicks here, as you see. I'm really just focusing on the body there. So there's two candles over here. I'm taking sort of the volume of this body if I zoom in here. I'm taking the volume of this body over here, and then price sold, and it came up to this body over here. Not, I'm not too focused on the wicks, but rather the actual body. And we can say that if they were accumulating positions down in some kind of discount or underneath lows like they did over here and then again pulling back and trading underneath here where can they look to unload some of these positions well they can look to unload some of these positions over here this would be considered as some kind of fair valuation where we are buying in some kind of discount over here and over here and we are looking to exit in some kind of premium so some kind of premium would be exiting above this high, exiting above this high, but at the same time where there is you know, a SIBI, as we mentioned, sell side imbalance and a buy side inefficiency. So if we look here, there is that SIBI really that we are looking at over here. I'll move this across. You'll see there's a fair value gap from that wick of that low to this high over here so there is a fair value gap here like that on the daily fair value gap but in terms of the four hour if we measure from the body of that up close candle to the body of this up close candle there is a larger fair valuation over here so if they are they buying in a discount where can they exit buys over here where buy side liquidity would be resting so not only is there buy side liquidity there but it's also in some kind of range and i'm not saying that you know from here it's now gonna reverse and you know plummet down who knows maybe it will maybe it won't but what i am saying is that they are buying down here buying down here they would be looking to exit some of that position that they took as a buy over in this area potentially exiting price retracing going lower and maybe looking for another buying opportunity to take prices even higher but that you know price action hasn't done that yet so we can't you know say that that's definitely going to happen we can only potentially predict or anticipate what is likely to happen so what's likely already happening is they bought in some kind of discount below a sell side liquidity and they bought in a discount and they are looking to exit in a premium so they'd be looking to exit above this high this would have been last week's high as well which would have also been what friday's high i think as well so that's where they'd be looking to get out of some orders where can they get out because their orders are large so we're not talking two lots three lots we're talking hundreds thousands potentially a couple of thousand in terms of the lot size and as you if you've ever traded a large lot size your position doesn't always get filled at the price that you want so what do they have to do they have to distribute above old highs and accumulate below old lows so when you are buying you are accumulating and when you're selling you're distributing price so generally what happens when price sells off the most trades into some kind of liquidity pool like you see here like you see here comes above this high and then pulls back comes below this low and then rallies and generally that's how the market would oscillate from buy stops to sell stops sell stops to buy stops intermediate to long term long term to intermediate short term to intermediate intermediate to short term it's not every single buy stop is always targeted but obviously you must understand where in terms of we are in price what is the high time frame uh, what is part of the pda matrix that is present on the chart and those are the things that you have to mark up so 
for example, now we could say the price is likely to continue higher until trading into this buy side liquidity over here. And only then, once it's inside of that buy side liquidity, should we potentially look for some kind of sell. So right now we would do nothing because it sort of hasn't really done anything significant yet. And you can see there's sort of a draw on liquidity by the you know, power of these candles. You can see they are expanding higher. So they're expanding into what? So it's consolidating, expanding. And if this is consolidation and this is expansion, when it gets here, it's either going to retrace and then continue expanding or expand and then reverse and then target sort of this area over here where there would be more liquidity. But that again hasn't happened, so we don't know that. So Manuel, um, your answer to the question is effectively we should identify like we have been fair value gaps using the wicks like we would normally do nothing's changed in regards to that but in terms of thinking like a market maker where are the most areas of inefficiency because just like there's inefficiencies on the candle wicks like we know with fair value gaps there are inefficiencies in terms of volume with the candle body so if we think like a market maker that is where price is very thin okay and if price is very thin there, there's lesser of the orders. So what does that mean? Well, if there's less orders there and they are in a long position, they can close that long position that they took. And the chances of that position being filled is much greater than where there's a lot of, you know, consolidation, effectively. Uh, Manuel, does that answer your question? It's probably a very long answer. No, no, it's okay. It's uh, it does, it does, it does. I was just I was just looking at the same pair that you're looking at right now. Yeah. So it does answer. And uh, I take this uh this recent high note that you uh that you that you that you mark up here. Yeah. I took that as a consolidation at the higher time frame, maybe four hours and one hour. Yes, yeah. yes. So this is this is effectively price is sort of ranging inside of this range right now it has yes, broken yes. the range but it has most recently traded off of a higher time frame being this daily bullish order block and before this daily right. bullish order block uh, it traded into this sort of uh, swing high over here you can see then it traded into the swing high which would have been classified as the rejection block and then price uh, did like a short-term sell-off here only to find support at the bullish order block over here before then moving higher so it would be reasonable expectation for us to believe that because it rallied from this daily bullish order block that if they were buying from this daily bullish order block and they were using this inefficiency over here to enter some new positions and accumulate some longs that this area over here can be used to exit some of those longs some or all i don't know i'm not a market maker but we are trying to think like a market maker and applying this process um, is effectively you know how we would get there and establish some kind of uh, bias or anticipation in the direction and things like that so looking at uh, any time frame you can do it so particularly most of us are going to be trading like one hour four hour daily and when we look at something like that and we look pretty much anywhere on the chart like let's uh, we did a four hour now so let's do a, another chart here and let's look at a daily chart for example and we zoom up here so obviously when we look at the daily we say that this whole price action over here from this up close candle to this up close candle is porous price action so there is this whole area is some kind of inefficiency over here and price obviously being a swing high as well has a liquidity pool sell uh, buy side liquidity uh, sitting over here so price did trade higher only to then drop from that zone and then you know maybe you missed that trade effectively you just wait for price to retrace to that potential order block, new price action order block that was created over there. 
but uh, this sort of happens time and time again, um, you know, whenever price is sort of inefficient. And you can see there's another one over here. Price made a swing of price over here, then it expanded lower and above this high and being the closing price of that up close candle and the opening price of this up close candle we can see price did trade higher now sure we can go mark out the wicks if we want but in terms of where we can look to exit a position or distribute a position this is that particular area that we are discussing right now same over here this up close candle here to this up close candle over here price trades through it and offers it on this inefficiency so yes sure there's little fair value gaps in here but in terms of volume and body and fair valuation of the range swing high swing low where is fair value to the market maker remember fair value Equal fair value is 50%. It's equilibrium. So above is premium and below is discount. You're looking to either exit a long position in a premium or exit a short position in a discount or accumulate new longs in a discount and distribute shorts in a premium. That's what or how the mentality of you know the market maker would work. And then just like we said now, on that four hour we can even see it on the daily actually is that if we come over here i don't know depending on your broker as well the candles might look different but effectively we can see that there's no up close candles from sort of this one over here to this one over here so in terms of where they can look to distribute price is in this zone over here i would still wait for that high of Friday to be taken which is last week's high before any sort of reaction should happen but effectively this too is an area of fair value that we can at least see in this range another area of fair value would be this one over here from this candles swing high of the body to this candle over here or maybe that's a doji for you and you use that one we're trying to zone up an area where we could look if we were in a buy to exit a buy if we were in a sell where to look for a sell and that's sort of this area here so if we were buying and we say bought to you last week when it tested this order block and maybe from that daily order block it maybe traded into these rejection blocks over here and we were buying somewhere here we'd be looking to exit above these highs because there'd be equal highs and then that eventually came over here on friday so maybe we were already out of the position but if we were still in a position and we already took some profit, we can look to take more profit inside of this zone over here, which is effectively that exact same zone over here. And that generally occurs time and time and time again. So even if we look at a weekly chart, for example, just clear this up in terms of fair valuation. And if we look here from this up close candle of last week to that up close candle of couple of weeks back there is fair value in this zone here and also it's effectively the last up close candle before price pushing down so we could say that there's a daily sorry a weekly order block sitting over here so that could be a likely target for price to go into is this whole zone here because we'd be coming from some kind of discount and this would be coming from some, some kind of premium over there so we have a range inside of this zone if you will and if price decides to trade in here go back down and maybe this would become a bullish weekly order block once this week would close there might be some kind of retracement so price may want to go up and then let's say that that would be a bullish order block on a weekly price came down retested that bullish order block the next logical fair value zone would be this up close candle to that up close candle those are logical zones or profit targets for uh, how we would think about a market maker so we would do something like that that would be a weekly bullish order block price would come in and then our next logical zone would be exiting a discounted buy inside of the next premium over here and that would be how we would anticipate 
price action or making a fair valuation of the market. And that fair valuation is limited or not limited rather to the weekly or to the daily or to the four hour. You could do a fair valuation. Let's just do one on a lower time frame because there's obviously people who trade lower time frames. And in terms of fair value from price making the last expansion where there would be efficient price action being traded, something like this, and expanding higher, there is fair value in this down close candle to this down close candle over here. So if we were going to buy, this is the area we would like to capture new buy positions. So we'd be trying to accumulate these buy positions. And then we use these liquidity points as basically lower lows for retail traders to get short so there can be more sell side liquidity offered and then buy below those lows already in some kind of fair value over here because there would be fair value in having this void over here so having created this void there'd be some kind of fair value in this because it was inefficiently traded so the same thing I'm showing you here on this 15 minute is exactly the same thing we just did on the, uh, you know, four hour and the daily and the zoom out here. And it's sort of the same thing. Anytime you see these kinds of zones over here like this and price moves away from a particular zone, there's inefficiency in these zones. Yes, sure, there's wicks in here and whatever, but in terms of even this 15 minute over here, we are looking at the inefficiency from this down close candle to this down close candle because there is inefficiency in the zone over here. And if we were shorting, well, there's inefficiency zones pretty much every so. So over here, that would be your last up close candle. And this being premium and discount price rating the low, this would be the premium of the range. So somewhere in the middle like this would be the sort of the fibs that you would pull. And then over here would sit the equilibrium point somewhere there. So if we were buying in some kind of discount over here or below these lows, total souping, I don't know, trading a void, this would be the area where you would exit out of that position. If you were buying. This happens over and over all the time. So even down here, why did price want to come? You know, we can see that there is liquidity here. So one time frame is external, another time frame is internal. It took the liquidity over there, took out this liquidity over there. So in terms of uh, price making this swing low to this swing high, it's outside the range of that swing of the low and the high. So there is sell side liquidity there. But at the same time, you can see that there is inefficiency sort of from this impulsive price action over here to here. Why here? Because this is the last down close candle, was, which was lower than that one. And we are measuring the inefficiency from this area over here. And then price comes into fill that inefficiency, as you see here, basically comes into fill that inefficiency. And it sort of just oscillates from one level of fair value to another level of fair value. So even like this zone over here, I don't know what's to the left of the chart, but this would have likely filled in some previous area of, you know, inefficiency. So if we look over here, it would have turtle souped. Uh, let's just zoom out there. So this would have been sort of the area where price was inefficient so over here traded lower traded high you can see low resistance liquidity run price traded high to the swing high maybe the order block or whatever what is it effectively doing it's trading there this zone here you can see it fills most of that volume and then boom price sells off again making less efficient price action from there to there so Wherever you see these inefficiencies, you can just see sell side offered and you pull this across, you could effectively just see. So there is that inefficiency. So there's up close candle, price gets delivered only to the downside really, and then boom, eventually price comes to close that inefficiency. 
and then price gets sent the opposite direction. Obviously, there's a lot more at play than just these inefficiencies or these fair values from the premium and discount levels, like uh, you attach some kind of PDA, but this just adds on to the whole idea of if you're taking trades based on any kind of idea, these are the areas where you can take profits and feel comfortable taking profits and not having that fear of missing out because of the fact that these are your fair valuation points. Uh, Temi Tope, uh, go ahead now. Sorry, I was just explaining. No, no worries. So my question was like these markups that you've just done, so in some cases, wouldn't you have to wait like a very long time for price to be around these zones? Because that's like the problem I find is that the markups I do, like whether I'm marking like um, swing highs, swing lows, fair value gaps, those sorts of things, is that price is like pages away from them, if that makes sense. So I'm just thinking like are these not points that price would have to, or you'd have to wait like quite some time for price to touch those points, if that makes sense. Uh, most definitely. So like, for example, you can see that uh, on the way down when price sold for whatever reason over here, it came back, closed this efficiency, and there was an inefficiency created over here. Then you can see it was traded a little bit inefficiency and then left another inefficiency behind. So in terms of mm. time over here, yeah, it really depends on what time frame you are using so like this if this is a 30 minute chart uh and it's a four hour chart or a day chart you know for in terms of the length of time it's going to take for price to effectively get to that more allocated zone that could take hours could take a couple of candles in terms of a couple of candles 15 minute wise or a couple of candles daily wise but each time it creates these inefficiencies we can expect them to be filled so like here it closes this inefficiency then price sort of rejects over here as you can see it sort of rejects this inefficiency so there's up close candle comes in closes this inefficiency and then gets sent lower so sort of this inefficiency zone has then been dried up and then you delete it off your chart and you just look for the next zone of inefficiency over here because while I'm showing you this on a 30 minute, these could be zones on a larger time frame where there is more inefficiency at play that you don't see, you know, on one time by just being myopic and looking at one time frame. So that particular zone I marked up over here may be prevalent in terms of both body and wick where it was delivered to the buy and sell side. But in terms of another time frame, it might not be. So like, for example, there, price was delivered into this bearish order block over here and this whole zone on that 30 minute is those down candle inefficiencies where there's no up close candle efficiencies so it is logical for price to come in there so if our position or stance on the market is that we are having a bias that is bullish and we are now targeting uh, buy side liquidity and we got sort of like a four hour something to back our idea or maybe a daily idea to back that up then these are those exit points so i'm not saying anything should change in terms of how you uh, trade the only thing that should be looked at is how you exit those trades or what your anticipation level of is for that trade okay and so with like top down analysis is that what that helps with so if you mark up and you see it's kind of like quite far away top down analysis will help you like sort of zoom in and kind of be more precise for the zones is that what that helps with or is that something good that's definitely something that helps so like for example okay. um let's say we start off at the weekly right now at mm -hmm. the weekly we know that there's an order block sort of in this zone over there right now in terms of not now this week okay right now so getting a little bit closer to that zone but in terms mm -hmm. of last week that order block right there may be irrelevant for the price action for last week because as you see it wasn't really near there and yeah. obviously as it gets there then it be, then you'd either add it to the chart or that's why i normally suggest is you know don't mark up you know price levels like over here oh there's a void here we should mark that up you know yes yeah, sure mark it up but like is price relative to where that is right now because if it's not then you're just going to have a whole bunch of everything on your yeah. chart so mm -hmm. to minimize like the clutter and just be focused on sort of either depending on your trading style like scalping or day trading or swing 
be relative to where price action is. That's what I always say. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. And then obviously that doesn't only translate into the weekly. So like uh, if we went to the daily, we know that this area over here is that weekly order block over there. But at the same time, just because that's a weekly order block, we know that's some kind of level of premium as well. We mustn't forget that that's a weekly zone, but over here when price last week came into sort of this daily zone, that uh, we can anticipate selling because based on the daily, that's the daily reaction. So if it's a daily reaction, well then you'd like to get anything lower than the daily reacting, which is what? Four hour, one hour and everything lower. So this is something that would sort of flow onto what we would effectively know about order flow. Now, listen, folks, this is where it gets quite interesting. Um, and you don't have to trade like this, but this approach and this uh, sort of process of thought helps us to understand order flow. It's not the order flow, but it definitely helps with order flow. And this is something I'm not making this up. This is... Uh, you know, realistic. So generally your markups, your high time frame stuff is going to come from your MWD, which is not weapons of mass destruction or whatever you think it is. It is monthly, weekly, and daily. So monthly, weekly, and daily. Each chart or each time frame has its own order flow. So for example, the order flow on a monthly is bullish, but then the weekly order flow is bearish and the daily order flow is bearish. So what that would effectively mean is that while the daily and while the weekly or while the weekly and while the daily is going lower, the monthly remains bullish. So all we would need to do is look for an area. So maybe something like this. I'm not saying this is it, but based on what you understand or will understand about a PDA, which is your premium and discount array, you would effectively do this and say this is the monthly chart forgive my drawings okay you would say that this zone over here is an order block and the closure of the void and somewhere over here maybe the candle from the previous month sort of ended like this we had rejected and now it's going to be sent lower over here right we already know this based on what we see this monthly chart is bullish okay but weekly and daily is bearish so what does that mean that means that for a couple of weeks a couple of days price action is going to sell which is fine we can be short-term sellers but when it gets into our monthly zone over here we will wait for the daily first then the weekly to start going bullish again off of the monthly this is where true support and resistance effectively comes into play because we're not trading support or supply and demand and all of that garbage. We are trading from one time frame relative to another time frame. This is the part where the understanding of what fractal is. So I'm going to continue explaining this shortly, but this is effectively how we can build on what we already know about our order flow. Okay, so basically what I was saying is that if the monthly chart is bullish, but the daily and the weekly and obviously every other time frame lower than the daily will turn bearish, that does not change the overall direction or the overall order flow of the higher time frame because where the money is, is actually on the monthly and on the weekly because every other time frame is just moving to the dance of the monthly and the weekly, all that little turtle soups and all of that stuff, but effectively price is moving according to what the monthly and the weekly is doing. So when price action goes bearish on a weekly and daily, it's effectively just going into a discount onto where the monthly is got a discount. That's where the discount would lie. And Another example would be if, for example, the monthly, weekly, and daily examples are that monthly is bullish, weekly is bullish, but daily is bearish, then what that effectively means is that you're going to look that when the daily is bearish, 
the monthly and the weekly are going to be your areas of discount where you would likely want to buy so that means that you'd be looking for monthly weekly order blocks voids mitigations breakers and all of the above total soups below swing lows that is where you'd be looking to buy because both the monthly and the weekly is bullish and the daily now goes bearish so what time frame is higher than the daily well it's weekly and monthly so you'd look to the monthly and the weekly for that area of significance be it a void be it an order block and when it gets there on the daily you then obviously use an executable time frame and wait for price to go bullish and that's effectively how the order flow would work so we could go on and on here there's a couple more examples it's not just that one so over here it could be that the monthly the weekly and the daily are all showing bullish price action over here so what that would effectively mean is that any time that whatever say four hour one hour starts to go down the minimum time frame you would need to look at is what comes first after four hour and one hour roger then i just repeat you just broke up a second say again for me darren so if the monthly order flow the weekly and the daily are all time frame on bullishness and the bias is bullish and you know the four hour starts to go and sell the one hour is selling what time frame higher than the four hour or the one hour will you need to look at for a discount so monthly weekly um bullish daily daily bullish. daily is bullish as well yes no sorry just broke up there being in the office i couldn't hear um i'm wanting to take a buy yes uh, i'll wait for the four hour to go into discount correct and where would your first level of discount be recognized on what time frame higher is higher than the four hour or the one hour the daily exactly you don't yeah. need to necessarily look at the monthly and the weekly as much because already all three are aligned but obviously there's different variations where they might not all be in sync but the overall bias doesn't change all that's happening is it's trading from one level of premium to one level of discount and in reverse if we look at it from this perspective and we say that the monthly the weekly and the daily so over here monthly is bearish weekly is bearish but daily is now bullish what would that mean what time frame higher than the, is the higher than the daily where we should look to possibly sell anyone like to answer that would it be weekly exactly guys that's it so if monthly and weekly is bearish and daily now goes bullish you know maybe it makes a couple of voids bullish order block yeah sure the daily is bullish but does that mean the overall monthly and weekly is now changed no because the weekly and the monthly are slow moving time frames and it takes a lot of money and a lot of time to close at the desired level so really even if price does trade into a particular area on a weekly or a monthly and blasts off to the moon on daily that still doesn't change the whole bias of that two time frames price would literally have to close at those positions to make our decisions come otherwise so monthly weekly is bearish so what we'd have to effectively do is look on the monthly or look on the weekly at particular levels and these levels could be like a for example uh, negative ob which is a bearish order block on a monthly chart mn that's monthly okay so that's a monthly order block but then maybe lower than the monthly order block you've got sort of this uh, week one sibi which is that sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency so what does that mean well down here 
Okay, obviously price had been doing something like this and boom. And then price on the daily has now gone higher. Something like that, maybe make a bullish order block. Where's the first level of premium? The first level of premium we've identified is this void or this uh, SIBI, if you will. So when price gets there, when daily gets to this weekly, there's a potential selling opportunity. Because then what's happening is that the weekly is still bearish, the monthly is still bearish, and then now the daily's price action has gone bullish and the bias has changed intraday. But that doesn't mean that the weekly and the monthly order flow has changed. So that the daily just trades into the weekly and then continues to sell from there. So you'd look on the daily that when price gets to the weekly, all the way from the lower time frame, that order flow will start changing. Could be from a one minute, could be from a 15, it could be from a, a one hour, it could be from a four hour. You're going to start to see when you zoom in there on this level, this weekly SIBI, there's going to be a change in this order flow. You're going to zoom right in there on that lower time frame. And then you're going to start to see something like that, maybe a break above an old high like that, and then choops, make a sell on a four hour, which would make that an order block. So that if price was to come in, test that order block on a four hour chart, that's a four hour bearish order block, but it's also backed by this weekly bearish something or monthly bearish something. So the order flow is bullish on the daily, but you are understanding that the order flow based on the higher time frame is still bearish and this is where swing trading comes in position trading or just understanding the general market um, you know oscillation from one level of potential selling to one level of potential buying and this is how it would effectively work this is the reason that we have different time frames and where this true support sort of resistance mentality lies not by drawing trend lines or demand zones or resistances or whatever else you think is working this is where it's actually at that one time frame trades into another one time frame tells the story that another one does not but that's where we've we've had to sort of come to this point to understand what the different elements of the pda are so the elements of the pda are these guys here order blocks, mitigations, breakers, rejections. This is our effective PDA. And if you haven't seen it, and I can't send it, I'll send it in the group chat. But this is effectively our PDA matrix over here. And with this PDA matrix, there is order flow on different time frames, and different time frames have different order flows. Just because one time frame's order flow is bearish doesn't mean all time frames order flow is bearish. It's just based on that time. And if your order flow is higher time frame bullish and the lower time frames are selling, well, it's just getting back in sync for a discount so that it can then continue to go higher. So drawing this out, let's just take a little screenshot here and let's just write here that uh, monthly weekly is bullish okay but the daily is bearish so on the weekly we potentially maybe find a week one buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency or a bullish void over here so that when price that is bullish on the monthly and bullish on the weekly and the daily starts to sell from an old high, we are looking to the monthly or the weekly for that level of discount. Now, it doesn't have to be a busy, could be a breaker, could be a mitigation on a weekly. I can't say what is there because not every price action and every price leg or different swing highs and lows of an array have every item here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items on this array so when you mark up a swing high and a swing low there's seven potential items inside of that swing high and low that you can use to trade but does that mean that there's seven every swing high and low no it doesn't we must just mark and see what we find in terms of price action we can't force it onto the chart if it's not there if it's there sure it's easily identifiable 
Any questions, guys? It's quite a tough subject for some. So maybe you don't understand it so easily as some others do or some others don't. But you should speak up if you don't so I can explain it in better detail. If this is not helping. Anyone? Uh, uh, I, I just want to ask for the screenshot of this preliminary uh, and this uh, on the group chat. Uh, yes, sure, definitely. I will uh, send this uh, to the group chat, undoubtedly. Thank you. This is very Thank important. You. Yeah. Okay, guys, so this is what your premium and discount array looks like. So when you mark up a swing high and a swing low, uh, these are your areas. So swing low makes a swing high. And in between that swing low and swing high, when price starts to trade lower, you need to look inside of this swing high and low what discounts or what premiums are there present inside of this pda and if i didn't show you or you didn't learn what each element of the pda are then you wouldn't know what i'm talking about right now so hopefully you individually you know what each item of the pda is and what it's made up of and the role that it plays in potential you know, reactionary areas. So you're using not only the PDA array, but you're using multiple time frames to find these PDAs. You don't just trade off of a 15 minute to scalp. You should have a reason why you're scalping to sell or to buy from a particular zone based off of a higher time frame. And that's how ICT has taught his students is the fact that you must understand what the higher time frame does so that when you go to a lower time frame, you understand why the lower time frame is doing what it's doing only to go into the flow of a higher time frame. And that is your PDA guys. So that's quite an important criteria over here to understand. And if you don't understand it, well, then you need to ask yourself some questions and we can always address it later. But that is your, oopsie, not this. Uh, where was I now? So, so over here is your PDA. Ah, yes. And before I forget, obviously with your PDA, the highest high and the lowest low, going back here quickly, is obviously the level of premium and the level of discount so the higher you go up in the array the more higher in premium you are basically so as i've said this before when you trade a lot of people like to trade order blocks so when you're trading an order block you're not at either the highest level of premium or the lowest level of discount there's still the rejection block potentially and the old low where price can trade into. So if price decides to come down to your bullish order block over here and show some sort of reaction and then you wonder why it just trades straight through it, well, it's likely either going for the rejection block or the next one on the list, which would be the old low, which would be where the liquidity is. And then you can get a potential new array after taking the old low because just how we use the array to either take profits at that's where the whole fair valuation what I was talking about comes into play is that we weren't just recognizing you know voids of price and inefficiencies but where are we in terms of the PDA because the PDA is applied to the chart and then if you're thinking like a market maker, we are looking to either buy or to sell something. And then once we've bought or sold and we're inside of a trade, these are logical points of reference. Just like you learned about the three institutional reference points, which is, uh, Tematope, can you remember what the three institutional reference points are? Um, order blocks, fair value gaps. And, oh no, in order, I can't remember, but I think the three are, one's order blocks and one's fair value like gaps i can't remember the third one okay so looking at this array what, mm -hmm. is, it, what is the order um it would be order blocks that no sorry it would be liquid liquid liquidity voids or voids first fair value gaps and then the order blocks mm -mm. no 
Okay, no, I'm not let's, too sure. Let's let's do this. And then we'll see if you can answer. So what is price doing right now? Uh, expanding. Okay, and let's say it stops expanding and now starts to whatever retrace or reverse from this point over here. What, mm -hmm. what is this? Liquidity. Oh, swing high or liquidity, yeah. Okay, so it's a swing high, it's liquidity, but it's also mm -hmm. what? What a part of bearish it? order block? No, the bearish order no. block hasn't formed yet. Okay. So it would be a apart from a swing high, I'm not too sure what else it would be. So the three institutional reference points mm -hmm. are I'm not giving them to you in the order, but they are fair value gaps or liquidity voids, mm -hmm. an order block or an old low and an old high. So okay. which of that is the reference point we are discussing right there that you see on the screen right now? Would it be an old high? Yes. So yeah. number one over here, old high, mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So having formed now the old high, okay, what do you think is going to form next if price continues to expand down here? Uh, like a fair value gap or a void? Okay, but before the fair value gap or before the void, what had to happen for that to take place? Did they have to buy price first, right? Yes. So they bought price. Mm -hmm. They stopped buying price and possibly, you know, exited some positions that they were having and then mm -hmm. price sold. Yeah. So it made that old high yeah from having made that old high all of this price action that was going higher was all traded through mm -hmm. and price then sold all of these up close candles so what is that if it sold would... <sighs> if this is one big up close candle here yeah an order block yes yeah oh okay no i was just because i said it before and it wasn't there so i was just wasn't yeah, sure of it but yeah an order block you must understand the the order in which yeah. they are created because they don't just like uh yeah the, yeah there's a fair value gap starting you know it doesn't mm -hmm. just like form out of nowhere you know yeah. it, it yeah. trades up gets to a point of you know pausing or consolidation or the next reversal or whatever it's doing it stops mm -hmm. there either making an old high or making an old low yeah and having made that old low or made that old high it then mm -hmm. starts to sell off which then makes this the order block yeah and then price because they bought it and they sold it into the buying and it expands, what does this area over here become? That then becomes like a fair value gap or a void. Yes, precisely. So when you look at the array, what do you see here that's forming? Old low, old high. Order block, order block. Void, fair value gap, void, fair value gap. Okay. Notice how when either it makes a swing high or makes a swing low, it's always the old low, or always the old high mm -hmm. of a new range. Yeah. So like any price action anywhere in time on any time frame, whenever mm -hmm. it stops going high and starts either reversing or retracing or going the other way, it's made a swing high, not so? Yeah. So on any time frame, there's always an array you can apply. Mm -hmm. Whether it's part of the overall higher time frame or just part of the particular time frame you're looking on, when you apply this array, it allows you to see price action. That this is ICT's version of what he believes price action to be. So okay. if you can understand this array and and what starts first, like those three, that's why I said those three are things are the most important when we learned about what IPTA is, the interbank price delivery algorithm. We said it mm -hmm. consolidates, then it expands. And after expansion comes the next phase, either it's going to retrace and expand higher or expand and reverse, right? So 
when we think of what the chart pattern looks like or the candlesticks would look like, it's making an old high of a particular range. And then from that old high or from that old low, it's starting to make a new array all the time. So that's why those three institutional reference points are so important to understand because mm -hmm. price makes an old high and that just looks, you know, like nothing really. But when mm -hmm. you draw it up, here's your order block, here's your void. So now you've got three elements already to trade. So either you're going to buy price back to close the void or when it closes the void and tests the order block, you know that you can possibly sell this again for price to expand lower, targeting yeah. the next array, which would be that old low, or maybe like a previous uh, old low, maybe down here, if price did something like that. Okay. So you're trading from one array to the next effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Makes sense. Does anyone else have any questions? Roger, did you understand what I just said? Yep, got it. Okay, and also the part, uh, guys, we are mentioned about while well, one time frame is bullish and the other one's not, that's how higher time frame to lower time frame would effectively work. So let's pick a random chart over here like this. And we just go something like this. I don't even trade this pair. This is GBP, JPY. And we look at the monthly. We can say that the monthly, at least for what we see here, it's bullish, right? So if we zoom in on this price section over here, it's been bullish over the last couple of months. How do we see that it's bullish? Well, it's moving away and expanding. And every time there's any kind of down candle, it keeps expanding. So we can say that for the last couple of months, which is probably the last year or two, it's been bullish. Okay. So what do we do with that information? Well, if the daily or the weekly goes bearish, all that it's going to go bearish into is the monthly. So looking at this over here and price expanding and we are looking for the highest ranged down close candle that would represent a bullish order block which is this guy over here so if the daily and the weekly go bearish they will have to trade into the monthly to go bullish again so daily and weekly will go bullish once it trades into the monthly. So if I go to the weekly, price is selling on the weekly only to sell into the monthly. Why didn't this void get closed? Well, because there's a monthly something and monthly overrules weekly. And yes, there's a weekly void. I wouldn't dispute that. So this area here, we could say is that void that we would have identified, but it didn't need to close that void because there is something of higher time frame significance, which is the order block that we found on the monthly over here. So when it trades into that zone, what's effectively happening? Well, the daily, you can see there, boom, it's bearish, retrace, expand. And only does it start to go bullish from somewhere that is monthly. And this is how price action moves all the time. Possibly even here, when it starts to sell down here, there's a reason for why I traded there and the bearishness on the daily stopped and started to go bullish again. So let's just change this over here and we can put that to a purple. So this daily piece of price action was selling off but the monthly was still bullish. So that means that either something on the monthly or the weekly stopped this daily price action from selling. So we go, let's just look in hindsight here and we say on the weekly, what is there? There it is. Daily was bearish here into what? This bullish order block. Last down closed full range body candle before the move up. Equal highs, pretty obvious. The daily goes bearish here and 
Well, the monthly is still bullish, so that doesn't change the overall trend. So daily went bearish. And you can see that. You can see that it goes bearish over here. Anytime price does this, why is it doing what it's doing? Even this little sell-off over here, so there was bearish price action all the way down to that point right there. And there would have been a reason why price would have stopped going lower at this point. So we could see on the daily that over here there's a daily order block, which is the last down close candle before this impulsive price action over here. But at the same time, if this daily was selling off and the weekly and the monthly were still bullish, then the only thing this daily is selling off into is either something on the weekly first or the monthly next, because that's the next higher time frame than the daily. And there we see trades down and this down candle gets traded through. So this is a weekly order block and this is a large range of price. So when you mark up the order block, you're basically saying that this whole sort of area is like the open, the 50%, then the rejection plot. So the deeper it goes down, the deeper in discount it gets. But that's where the higher time frame going down to the lower time frame would work because you mark it up something like that. That would be your sort of order block that you're working with immediately. And then if it goes lower than the 50%, then you have to pull eyes to your rejection block, which would be anything over here below inside of that wick as you learned about a rejection block but your order block here first and then obviously the old low and you can see that we don't know where in this range from the open to the 50 percent roundabout we don't know how far down the daily is going to trade so what do we do well either we wait for price to come in here on a lower time frame because remember we wouldn't necessarily enter off of a daily unless we like swing trading we didn't care about that much about stop loss but rather bias you'd have to wait for a lower time frame and still guys what i see from this is fair value still see fair value here price made a high it traded lower so every time from this low these lows here all the way to this high oopsie there would be an array so from here to here this would be some kind of array and everything below here is discount so if we were accumulating longs in a discount it would be anywhere below this 50 percent of this range that we are working within and everything above here is premium so we wouldn't want to buy anywhere above this 50 percent line and then we mark out higher time frame arrays like this weekly order block but at the same time you can see this is a four hour chart so you would be interested to buy this chart on a four hour or a one hour if you wanted to and you'd be looking below the 50 percent possibly in your weekly zone where is exiting of shorts or distributing the shorts into the accumulation of the longs where do they accumulate in a discount where is effective areas that we can identify in a discount where there would be these fair valuations so here is where the discount is below the 50 percent so there would be the first one over here see price trades in has a reaction trades higher fails to trade any higher and then boom trades lower where what where is it trading well it's trading into the next point of valuation which would be somewhere there over here you can see there's very little fair value in terms of this down candle there and this down candle there but it still effectively does that okay but now you can refine it down as much as you want but this is where you see these inefficiencies so like even over here it would have started and made an inefficiency over there traded higher traded lower closed the inefficiency boom traded higher made a new inefficiency from that down candle so it closed the inefficiency and then boom it rallied away and you could see how every time it left behind some kind of inefficiency later price action filled these inefficiencies in just like there was inefficiencies over here 
over here and over here. These are positions that if we were long, we can look to get out of those positions. So at a later time, this area here could possibly be filled in. This one here was filled in. As you can see, it was filled in and then price closed it. This one here was filled in. This one remained unfilled plus an additional point of liquidity was formed there so that when price would return, this would be a target over here. And then obviously there's inefficiency on the move down here. There's inefficiency over here. You could see these inefficiencies are every single place on the chart. You just have to identify them and then effectively closes an inefficiency, comes back down, makes some relative equal lows and closes out that inefficiency down below over here. They're pretty much everywhere. So like even over here, there's one over there where there was no buy side offered. There's an inefficiency. So at a later stage, if you will, you know, bias is a particular direction or if you're bullish, you know that these are inefficient areas of price action and that later, as these inefficiencies build up and they gather in greater quantity over time, the more quantity there is of them, the more reason that price would want to return to those inefficiently traded areas. Because as you see here, they create long-term inefficiencies and the more of them that get created, the more reason for price to want to come and fill those inefficiencies. So not only can they be used to exit these short positions, but because they are inefficient in themselves, new positions to buy can be taken because there is less of the opposite end of the order. Why? Because if I close a buy position, my broker is selling me that buy that I took. And if I sell a position, my broker is buying my sell when I exit that position. And the same mentality is that when you're a market maker or an institution, someone else has to be taking those orders. And where do, where do they take those orders? These inefficiencies, turtle soups above old highs inside the sell side or buy side liquidity. That's where this whole paradigm shift comes in. That's what it, why ICT knows what he knows and does what he does. And you know, if you don't see it on the charts, then this is sort of the area that we are trading right now. And uh, price, as you can see now, um, hasn't closed any of these inefficiencies that, that have been made on the chart. So over here, price has closed some in, uh, inefficiencies by coming down over here. And we can say that the order flow is still on a higher time frame. I don't know what this chart does. On the higher time frame, though, that it is bullish. So that means any pullback on a four hour or a daily does not change the trend of a monthly or a weekly time frame. Uh, and that hopefully also goes on to what uh, Emmanuel asked at the beginning of the lesson. You know, you don't only look for the inefficiencies, you couple those inefficiencies with other elements of your PDA. Uh, so there's an uh, element of premium over here coming from these highs and you can see there's sort of like this trend line type of thing forming something like that so there'd be quite a buildup of liquidity here and that would be the obvious or most obvious direction of the most easiest uh, direction to absorb liquidity that would be the po point of the exercise is to see where is the likelihood of the most absorption of liquidity because that's effectively what's happening is they're absorbing liquidity and either exiting or taking new positions based on that liquidity. Uh, even over here, generally price only does anything like this is Euro GBP, price only ever does anything when it takes some kind of liquidity and that could be long term liquidity, short term liquidity, intermediate term liquidity, price only ever does anything once it takes liquidity. So if you can on your trading plan or if you're trying to build a strategy, if you can incorporate some kind of uh, intermediate, short term, long term sell side or buy side liquidity into your trade, then and, and have in the opposite a direction of where 
price would likely want to raise the next points of liquidity, then that would elevate your trading. You know, you don't have to do anything different as, unless you had nothing to do with the understanding of liquidity, which is what you shouldn't be doing. But uh, obviously incorporating some points of liquidity or the understanding of, you know, where price is moving towards and where those liquidity points are, it would set you apart from most, uh, you know, even ICT traders who don't uh, incorporate that into their trades. There must be some idea or understanding of liquidity, either a direction towards liquidity or a reason to enter a trade based on liquidity. As we see here, price basically took these highs and then reversed over here, even this high actually as well. So, you know, that could be an area of whatever premium could be an area of an order block could be a void closed but in essence this is where liquidity is so for example this is a whatever 15 minute chart you're looking at we know there's equal relative equal highs here and on a higher time frame there'd be some kind of order block maybe or whatever we would find here let's look if there's something on the higher time frame so there's this like a uh, long-term uh, wick over here which would be a rejection block so that if price was to trade into the open of this up close candle we know that, that is a daily rejection block and on a four hour uh, the four hour could have been something like this long large order block over here would have been maybe some kind of mitigation because there was a failure swing over here so if you saw that on a one hour there'd be some kind of making a high here and then trying to go higher but failing as well as possibly being some kind of break over here this was the last swing low before the high that took liquidity so that would be some kind of breaker so maybe like it's combined with a breaker or combined with an order block combined with a void of something on a higher time frame combined then with liquidity that sets you up for a great entry and it doesn't have to always be precise and we're not trying to sell the resistance we are just saying that instead of others who are buying here we are trying to sell here okay guys we're going to take a uh, five minutes and then we're going to come back for some questions okay so what we were saying about the order flow so following institutional order flow with higher time frame directional bias monthly weekly daily uh, you can basically come here i'm going to add the notes for the lesson onto this document for the notion but basically it's the same thing as uh, remembering what we spoke about in terms of finding fair value. Whenever you want to trade is you're finding some sort of value to sell or value to buy the market. And then you're using your same market to determine where you can enter or exit trades based on institutional uh, reference points, uh, which is this point over here. So remember we said that uh, if the market is bearish and we'll see a reversal above a consolidation to liquidate buy stops, which would be the old high, and then expand lower. So effectively we've then raided the liquidity, we've made an old high, we've made now an order block, we then get a void, which is the low resistance liquidity run. That makes the trading environment more favorable to trade that low resistance liquidity run as as we've learned so I'm not going to get into too much detail of this but uh, again you just ask yourself what is resting above and below areas where price has consolidated it stops it's liquidity that's why we learned those things and why you had the exercise on the 15 minute on the one hour the four hour the daily to mark up those swing highs and then those swing lows and then coupling that with something with like a bullish daily order block but again it doesn't have to be an order block that was just the exercise of that time that you were using the daily order block it could be a daily void could be a weekly void could be a weekly mitigation daily mitigation something of higher time frame nature coupled with resting buy side or resting sell side liquidity what is price targeting once it leaves some area of consolidation consolidation is it targeting more buy stops or more sell stops is price reversing or is price retracing that comes down to just understanding what phase of the market price is really doing on the time frame that you're in 
and that's how order flow works you know if it starts to target more buy side liquidity well then the order flow on that time frame is bullish and if it starts to target more sell side liquidity then it's bearish and every time it targets one or the other either buy side or sell side liquidity it's going to do something with that liquidity so either price is going to just then retrace and take another short-term liquidity or take the liquidity and completely reverse to the larger intermediate sell side or buy side liquidity in opposite to that particular turtle soup that happened so that's the purpose of understanding what we did thus far and if you haven't done it well that's your own fault but you should have all done those exercises and then we spoke now about what we can expect from different order flows on different time frames and what role those time frames play in order flow using it looking at a higher chart time frame and saying what order flows on what time frame and one order flow might be uh, not the same as say monthly weekly but then daily might need to fall in sync with the higher time frame or vice versa and there's going to be more questions about that which is fine because it's sort of a difficult subject but that's effectively how we are going to understand order flow okay so there's not a lot of us in now this particular session which is fine so i'm just going to go ahead anyway and we're going to go on to the next piece of teaching and that next piece of teaching is the following so i'm just going to get a clean area here and we are going to draw out time time is the element of the market opening on a particular day time is the element of um, the market opening on a particular uh, week month obviously opening price is an element of time just like the opening price of london which is like your kill zone type of thing that is an element of time new york session element of time the kill zone the element of time so if we understand that when we're trading doesn't matter what we're trading stocks bonds crypto forex uh, commodities whatever we're trading we are trading two things time and price so when we understand the two we can then use the two to make informative decisions based on price action because when the two relate to one another something happens something happens significant so part of your exercise initially was marking up those swing highs marking up those swing lows and then deciding or you know documenting when you made those swing highs and when you made those swing lows either on the day either during the course of the week on what day say let's say a monday did the high of the day occur was it in the london session or was it in the new york session or what time did the, the low of the day form was it in the new york was it in the london and then through the week you would not then have only the high of the day or the low of the day but the high of the week and the low of the week so the point of that exercise to mark up those relevant zones was to identify and now build a bridge to cross so that you can get to the other side using those materials that you needed to build the bridge those were the materials those swing highs those swing lows which session was the high which session was the low what day was the high what day was the low all of that was the building blocks to understand the time and price elements of price action so now we're going to go into a little bit more detail and discuss the element of time in relationship to potentially the high of the day the high of the week or the low of the day and the low of the week so if you did that studying procedure okay generally what you're going to find is that price on a monday or if it's a sunday for you if you live in the states that's fine too same thing you're going to find that price is going to open for the week and this is going to be the price where it opened for the week the whole week's price has opened here can't that can't change the market is open there on a, whatever sunday or monday whatever time zone you live in but the market has opened there nothing is going to change in regards to that so once the price opens there we are going to look then further out into the future so monday is going to come 
uh, then so here would be Monday. Uh, this would be Tuesday, and then somewhere over here would be Wednesday. Over here, so we've got Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then this over here would be the weekly open over here. So there is this time element here that is going to have a large relationship to what price action is going to do in terms of time, right? Sure. So when you think of price, price is like your order block, your void, your old high, your liquidity grab, mitigation block, breaker, propulsion block, whatever that element you're using, that's your price element. And time is these guys. Time is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, New York open, London open, New York session, New York kill zone, weekly open, monthly open, daily open. Those are all elements of time, right? So when we think and break up the week, the week is made up of Monday to Friday. But of Monday to Friday, probably more than 70, possibly even 80% of the time, what you're going to find is that either the high of the week or the low of the week is going to form on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. And, you know, if you go and look at more history, you might narrow it down to if you're trading one particular currency or commodity that you might find that on a Tuesday gold makes the most consecutive lows over the last year and that's just something you'll have to go and research but the element of time still remains is that of the Monday Tuesday or Wednesday this is where it's very likely that price action is going to make a high or a low of the week and when you further break it down we are then looking at just three days instead of five days. So it gives us less scope of data to look at. We then from the three days can narrow it down further because within these three days sits 36 hours, 24, 24, 24. Uh, sorry, 72 hours. That would be 72 hours over here. 24, 24, 24. So 76 hours. Within that 76 hours, we can further subdivide or compartmentalize the week within the trade, within the trading of the weekly outlook. So within the Monday, disregarding the uh, Asian range, we can look to not now marking up the Asia session, but the London session over here and over here the Wednesday the New York session so instead of and then obviously if you were looking at the whole week it would be Thursday and even Friday like that okay but you know for this part of this exercise we're not so focused on Thursday Friday we are looking Monday to Wednesday and of Monday to Wednesday it's not the entire 24 hours of Monday and the entire 24 hours of Wednesday. It is a portion of Monday, which is the London Open, <coughs> the whole day on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, it's gonna be the New York Open. So somewhere from Monday to Wednesday sits, or likely would sit, very high chance that either price is gonna make a low or make a high. And where, if you've done your homework, from previous lessons, where would this likely high or likely low potentially be made? Because if this is the time element of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and the green arrows represent the London Open on Monday, and the Wednesday represents the New York Open on Wednesday, then instead of looking at the entire week, you're looking at this narrow scope of price action as the element of time, and looking at over here the wo which is the weekly open we are using the weekly open to suggest that if we are bullish somewhere in the discount where would the discount be well likely either from a daily order block a weekly order block a weekly void a daily void a mitigation on a daily a weekly mitigation a breaker something you would find on a higher time frame what is higher time frame well Pretty much anything higher than a four hour is a higher time frame. And that's where your high or the low of the week is likely to form. So if we were bullish and we wanted to buy, 
anywhere below the weekly open is considered a discount. So we would likely want to look for bullish order blocks, gaps, voids, breakers on a daily, on a four hour, because we're bullish. And if it's the discount, then anything below the weekly open is considered discount. And instead of the whole week, we are trying to find the low of the week. We are just looking London, Mondays open on the London and Wednesdays open on the New York. It's a very narrow scope. So somewhere from the weekly open on the Monday, when the London comes to when the New York comes on Wednesday, it's likely to have formed the low of the week if we bullish. Obviously, if we bearish, then anything above the weekly open is considered a premium. And then we should look for price elements like voids, breakers, whatever, in the opposite to sell. That same rule applies. So this is the element of time. And then your PDA is the element of price. Obviously, this, what I'm showing you here, weekly open, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, isn't only time. There's other things that also make up time. But you know, it's not part of this lesson which is like IPTA data ranges and things like that. But for now, and, you know, central bank dealers range. So, but for now, we're focusing on the element of the weekly open, anticipating the weekly range. Because if we can catch like a portion of the weekly range, and, you know, even if we're wrong, you know, we could get some substantial moves in the marketplace. As long as we're identifying some areas of liquidity of where price would likely want to target, it doesn't actually matter too much if we have the incorrect bigger or larger time frame bias it does help to have that but it's not the be all end all we can still be short-term traders and not have um you know like a weekly bias or a daily bias but rather just a one hour or a four hour direction of where we see liquidity that's likely to be absorbed that can be targets for our price action um, but still even if you're a day trader a sculper position trader this concept of time can assist you because if you're trading day to day or sculpting or day trading, whatever, intraday, this is obviously very beneficial. But if you're more of a person who likes to swing trade or position trade, you might have to wait of like a four week month, you might have to wait, you know, one or two weeks for you to get your uh, position on your entry. Um, and then that obviously, instead of being the weekly open, you might want to use the monthly open because if you're bullish and you're trading below the monthly open, technically everything below the monthly open and you're bullish would be some kind of discount. You just have to find the element of price below the monthly open so that you can then find a discount. Does anyone right now have any questions? No questions so far. Thanks, Gary. Okay, guys, well, it's up to you now to now that I've showed you this, and you've pretty much learned a lot of the things over the past few weeks about the elements of price. This is one of the first things, uh, probably not the only thing that you will learn about the element of time, you already know more or less what a kill zone is or the London open or that the, each uh, day is made up of different sessions. And that's how Forex can be open. Uh, you know, 24 hours a day, five days a week. And that's how it is made possible because there's different sessions and different markets open at different times. More mar Some markets like the London and the New York are obviously more liquid than like the Australian and the Japanese Chinese markets. So that's our sort of kill zones, if you will. And applying what you've learned thus far with, you know, breakers and voids and mitigations, order blocks, how to identify them, low resistance liquidity runs, everything you've learned thus far is a lot to do with the element of price. I'll take your question now, Emmanuel. This is to do a lot with the element of time. So when you identify this, you're looking from Monday to Wednesday for a potential high or a potential low of the week. And basically, you are trying to trade in your directional bias, anticipating the low or the high of the week. Now, this is the time. And if this is the time window, then the price window is where is the void? Where is the breaker? Where is the order block on the higher time frame that it's likely to trade into to give you that level of price? Go ahead, Emmanuel. You've got a question. Oh, yes, that, uh, 
according to our applied chill zones, it's, it's, it's based on the link that you sent us before about the chill zones. Uh, sorry, what can you repeat the question? I didn't quite hear. Yeah, because I remember that you sent us the, the link with the section, session of New York and London. So oh, it's yes. been that. Yes, I remember. It was uh, this over here. Let me find it. Um, it was that clock, basically. Yes. It just tells you when the market opens in your time zone. So obviously my market time, obviously the market. Um, my is the same as yours. Yeah, it's it's the same because we possibly in the same time zone, but obviously the the market throughout the world in the US market opens at the same time relative to the US. So everywhere in the world, it's open at whatever time it opens, but obviously it's different based on where you live. So it still opens at 8 a.m. New York time, but that 8 a.m. New York time will be uh, whatever time that is in South Africa or Europe or wherever you live, you know, it's just relative to where you live. But yes, this is that same thing, Emmanuel, is that um, when you look at this, you're looking from Monday's open to Wednesday's New York open. So Monday, Monday London open to Wednesday, New York open, you are trying to anticipate where it is likely for the low or the high to form. You should try to get a bearish or bullish bias based on the chart you're trading. And when you've got this bias, then you are trying to formulate a trade setup for a buy or for a sell, depending on your bias. You're trying to sell above the weekly open if you're bearish and buy below the weekly open if you're bullish. So uh, if let's say uh, the US market say that it's closed, so for you it will be Monday 4 p.m. So that 4 p.m. it's uh, South Africa time as you live in South Africa. Uh, no, I don't actually currently live in South Africa. No, I'm uh, for GMT plus four, which is two hours ahead of South Africa. Okay. No. So uh, okay, okay, okay. No problem. I do understand. So that's that's a that's a current time or on where you live, where you living. Where I live, yes. So for me, yes. today's um, like for example, now the U.S. market is currently closed, so there's no New York kill zone yet. But in 45 minutes, this will be where it starts for me, 4 p.m. And then my 4 p.m. is your 2 p.m. as far as I know, if you're in South Africa. Right. Because I'm two right. hours ahead, so it would just be this, obviously, this um, website I've given you displays based on your, where you live, your location. So my location says 4 p.m., but if you go to this same website, it will say 2 p.m. for you. Because I had a little bit difficult from understanding this, but now it's clear. Oh, okay. No, well, that's that's good then. I'm glad it's clear. Uh, do you understand the part that I just spoke about now, what we are trying to do with the information we've learned prior to today's lesson, using those highs, those lows, the order blocks, the voids, everything part of the PDA, and attaching now a time element to that? Yes, yes, I do. It was clear. Okay, so if we do an example here on a clean chart, over here so let's just get a clean chart and we look at last week and we mark up last week over here this was the open of last week over there over here right about there oh, whoops that one over here possibly we can even go to one hour to narrow that down but this would have been today, which is Monday, then Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So this is Monday. Then more precisely, that candle over there would have been the open of the week. So looking at the price action from this, okay, when the market opened, it immediately ran higher. And when it ran higher, what did it do? Well, it ran these stops 
it took out those stops. It maintained these stops and these stops. So there would have been a, a line like that drawn. And then you said, well, it didn't take out all of these highs. So by moving away over here on Tuesday, moving away after taking the high of Monday, that would have been Monday's high that was raided. Monday's high was raided, as you see. It didn't take this long-term intermediate-term liquidity over here. It did take short-term liquidity over here by moving up in Monday. Tuesday came. Tuesday took out Monday's high and then sort of consolidated. And then Wednesday came. Wednesday failed to take out Tuesday over here. And sort of just traded the inside bar, if you could call it that, because it didn't go higher than the previous day and didn't go lower than the previous day. So if we understand that each day lower than that day or the low of that day or the high of that day would represent that if we're bullish, those are areas of discount. So here we said this is the weekly open. And any time it makes a high or makes a low, underneath the low and above the high sits liquidity. And those are the most extreme points of discount or premium, depending on if you're bullish or bearish. So over here, Tuesday took out Monday. Tuesday traded lower. Wednesday's London came, failed to take out Tuesday and traded an inside bar. Thursday came and traded lower than Tuesday's low over here so now that basically thursday came traded lower than tuesday which is also if we were to mark this up here in terms of price there's actually that daily bullish order block sitting around here somewhere which is what this traded off over here so there's a daily bullish order block over here but it didn't take out monday's low over here which is quite interesting it didn't take out monday's low so it took out tuesday's low and then it rallied away. Interesting is that you can predefine or determine where price would likely want to go next because of where it has been or has not been based on previous liquidity points. Like now, it's natural for price to go higher here. Today is Monday. So if we are having the idea that the overall price is bearish and our order flow on like a daily is bearish maybe or a weekly is bearish and any move above highs would be a sign of liquidity grabbing then what we would look for is that preceding today being monday so it's the first day of the week we would anticipate that for the remainder of the week if today would be monday the high would come that tuesday can take out Monday's high, but it can also not take out Monday's high. It should then trade lower and be having no reason to come higher again because of this liquidity grab. So if this is in fact a liquidity grab and price is going to reverse over here inside of this buy side liquidity, then preceding today, Monday, we should expect lower prices. And each day that precedes each London session or New York session should not have the ability to take out the preceding day's liquidity points. So what that means is that if we raid this liquidity and we're done with all of this liquidity and price reverses from here, then Tuesday shouldn't have a need to take out Monday's high. And Wednesday shouldn't have a need to take out Monday's high. It's a story of price. If you can build a story of price every week, you will do very well in, in trading. You don't have to always be right. You can just be right once or twice a week. It's fine. You don't have to call the market as every move drops. But, uh, you know, that's why we learn these things. And if you just take a few of them into consideration and you make informed decisions, there's no harm in taking a couple of losers per week. That's also why we looked at variable risk and risk reward. Because obviously coupled that with the element of psychology, risk management, it's a setup for success. So
today being Monday, like we said, we are anticipating a high to form. And now the high is formed. It's obviously taken all of this buy side liquidity. So we could say that price is in some kind of premium and we should return back to some kind of discount. So where would the discount of that be? Well, it could be really, if it stops over here going higher, the discount could be at sort of this mitigation over here where it made a failure swing or this void we could use over here if we were selling if we were buying so too could be said is that if price was to trade here we could use that as a reason to get in the trade as much as if we were selling it's a reason to get out the trade it's as much of a reason to get in the trade if we were that way inclined either we're selling or either we're buying we can't do both, otherwise we'd be hedging and we shouldn't be trying to do that. We should pick a particular direction to trade and trade it. And if we're wrong, we document it and learn from a price action. That's part of why we journal. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. But we can see here, like I said about the uh, liquidity, that uh, price came up. So if we zoom out here onto like a one hour chart, Price made a high, price made a low. If we zoom out here, it made a low. So all of this price action from this high all the way down to this low is internal range liquidity. So every time price moves above a high, it's raiding internal range liquidity. And every time price is making a low, it's making internal range liquidity on one time frame and making external range liquidity on another time frame. So when it trades below this low, it's trading of this swing low and this swing high internal range liquidity on one time frame. But when it comes below the low, that is external on another time frame. So while that is on the daily or four hour, possibly some kind of internal range liquidity over here on a lower time frame, that would represent some kind of external range liquidity because on the 15 minute this would have been the intraday swing low intraday swing high internal on one time frame price comes in dips below the internal of the one hour the four hour but external of the five minute or the 15 minute in retrospect to whatever time frame that you're looking at but on this time frame on the 15 minute this would be an external range liquidity idea and on a four hour or a daily, a higher time frame, from this swing low to that swing high is internal range liquidity. And when we trade, based on however we are trading, whether it be scalping, day trading, we are trading from one internal to external. So when we take internal, we go external. When we take external, we go internal. So based on where we are right now, this is the swing low, and let's say it stops going higher over there. That's the swing high and starts to go down now. And let's say we sell. See, we are targeting everything from this swing low to that swing high as internal range liquidity. So if we're selling now based on a four hour order block, maybe a old high to a soup, whatever our idea is to sell right now and we sell it we will be trading from an external range liquidity to an internal something so something in here would be you know we could see here like for example this would be equal lows relatively maybe there's like a void over here that exists something like that you'd really have to cross reference your time frames to tell you these things like for example there there'd be a void here so Either you target the lows, either you target the closure of this void, maybe on like this one hour, or if it's a four hour, there's a four hour void here, or the retest of this order block. These are institutional reference points. So this is an order block, that's old low, this is a void. So these three things, this void, this order block, and this old low are three institutional reference points. And if we were selling, this would be those targets, external range liquidity, to internal range liquidity. Where's the internal range liquidity? This swing high, this swing low, internal. And that would be our target. External target to internal target or internal target.
to external target. So when you trade external, you go internal. And when you're internal, you go external. Anyone have any questions? Because we've basically covered what we needed to cover today. Um, I'll, as I said, I'll fill this in. You guys can come and check this out with the rules regarding the monthly, weekly, daily order flow. Um, but basically, you're going to have to practice, which would be your homework, uh, build, um, build on of what you've learned about marking up swing highs and lows of each session, which session they occurred, which day of the week they occurred, one hour liquidity points, four hour daily swing highs, swing lows. And now those are elements of you know, a little bit of time and price. But now we are focusing on trying to anticipate weekly price movement by looking at where is the likelihood a high of the week would form or a low of the week would form. Because most of the time, if you look at any time, a high or the low of the week will form at some relative PDA on a higher time frame most of the time and also not only is it forming the high of the week or the low of the week at a higher time frame pda price but that high or low of the week is forming at a time what time well if you're trading new york or london kill zones that's the time when it's likely on the monday tuesday or wednesday to form one of those three days, very likely, 70-80% of the time, or I don't know what the percentage is on your particular pair, most of the time, Monday to Wednesday, is when the high or the low of the week is going to form. And when you compartmentalize that, if you trade every day, Monday to Wednesday, you will likely find that you catch the high or the low of the week if you trade those sessions. Because one of those sessions, from Monday to Wednesday, is going to provide the high or the low of the week. I can't tell you which one, but that's what it will come down to. You having to watch, study price action, learn it, interpret it. But yeah, that's that's it for now, guys. That's it for today. So any any questions? Does anyone have any questions right now? Okay, no questions, no problem. Okay, so guys, this is basically where we are right now. Uh, we are learning about, okay, Roger, I see you got your, oh, you clapping. Okay, cool, no problem. So we're going to learn about uh, incoming lessons. We're going to learn about interbank price delivery algorithms, data range, okay, which is another element of time. Uh, we learned now about the PDA array over here, which is our array, that it, what it looks like. There'll probably be a lot of questions about this. Um, the price. Uh, that's what you're going to be learning and we discussed now the high of the low of the weeks so this should be actually over here and in the coming weeks to wrap up lesson six to eight we will so this is lesson seven i think so we'll have one more lesson which would wrap up this whole section um, and then we will discuss what many like is one of the three favorites which is smt cot data or seasonal tendency and those are your confirmation versus confluence of price action but uh, yeah that's that's it for now guys